SpaceX versus China in a new space station race. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. We're coming to the very end of some fireside. I hope you're joining me for your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, space, SpaceX, a little bit of Linux here and there. Today is a SpaceX day. We're not talking about Starlink that much. It's gonna be all about SpaceX and what they're doing when it comes to the ISS. The ISS is getting close to end of life. So what happens now when we no longer have it? Well, what happens is commercial. Everything goes commercial, right? Money, money, money. That's how it goes. There'll be a lot of private companies getting involved, but what would that actually mean? Mean for development, for future of space? What does it mean for any type of technology, even when it comes to drugs? What does this mean? So I was reading an article. I want to go through some of it with you. I thought it was really interesting, and I thought maybe you guys would too. I'm gonna go through it. I wanna know your thoughts on it down below. I'll give you my thoughts as I always do, but down below, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this stuff? Um, is it something you're interested in? What do you think about what is happening with the ISS and the decommissioning that should be coming in the not so distant future? Once again, it is coming to an end, end of life when it comes to the ISS. It's been there for many, many years. The beauty of the ISS is that it's always been international. So it doesn't matter who you are and from what walk of life you come from, what nation, it doesn't make any much of a difference. You can be there. And I think that's awesome, especially when it comes to research, when it comes to medical science. So anyways, let's get into this article. Once again, I'll give you my commentary and then down below, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this? If you enjoy the content, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click this notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work on the channel, Click down here, it says thanks. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink content specifically, I have 470 videos just for you. I'll put a link here, don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, go back, click there and check them out. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do. Of course, the why behind it all. Once again, 470 videos, it's a lot just on SpaceX Starlink. Anyways, it starts out by saying, will NASA's commercial space station gamble secure or jeopardize America's space dominance? The International Space Station, or the ISS, is a cornerstone of space exploration. It's nearing the end of its operational life. NASA's ambitious plan to replace it with commercial space stations in low Earth orbit, or LEO, marks a pivotal shift in the space industry. However, this specialized companies and experts who have driven the ISS's groundbreaking microgravity experiments face an uncertain future. That is absolutely the case. If these implementation partners fail to navigate the transition to commercial platforms, their invaluable expertise and Americans' leadership in space could be at risk. 100%. Preserving the backbone of space innovation. The ISS's implementation partners have spent decades mastering the art of microgravity research, producing advancements like advanced materials and biotech breakthroughs. These experts are essential to space technology ecosystem that fuels progress. Yet, the shift to commercial LEO platforms, each with unique business models and access protocols, threaten their survival. Without a clear path to integration, the institutional knowledge that powers innovation could erode, potentially ceding ground to competitors like China, whose space ambitions are growing rapidly. SpaceX's pivotal role. SpaceX, a titan in the space industry, is already a key player in ISS operations, ferrying crew and cargo with unmatched reliability. As commercial platforms like Axiom Station or Blue Origin's Orbital Reef emerge, SpaceX's involvement could be transformative, whether through partnerships or even developing its own LEO infrastructure. NASA's Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destination, or CLD, 
program aims to facilitate this transition, but its success hinges on ensuring that these partnerships remain viable. Economic Geopolitical Stakes Beyond technology, the ISS ecosystem supports a supply chain that generates billions in economic activity and thousands of jobs across the U.S. A botched transition could destabilize regions depending on space-related industries. Geopolitically, the stakes are even higher. With China advancing its own LEO capabilities, the U.S. must maintain its strategic edge. A robust commercial LEO ecosystem, LEO, once again, low Earth orbit, ecosystem is critical to sustaining America's leadership in the global space race. Charting a collaborative path forward. To thrive, the ISS partners must form consortia to pool resources, navigate or negotiate with platform providers, and invest in training to master commercial operations. International agreements promoting open access to LEO platforms are essential to preventing a fragmented space economy. NASA's CLD program must prioritize smart procurement strategies to stabilize the transition. For those invested in the future of space exploration, this moment will define whether commercial space stations propel innovation forward or falter under mismanagement. The space community awaits the outcome. Will NASA and its partners secure America's place at the forefront of space exploration, or will this transition become a missed opportunity? The answer will shape the next era of human presence in space. I agree with this 100%. So this is something that I think NASA really has to take heed of. What happens once the ISS disappears? We know that it's going to move, they, they say it's going to move into the private sector. Well, what does that mean? And what they're talking about here is there is problems with that. There's, it's good and it's bad, right? It's good because then you have a lot of opportunity for companies that have never been there before. Like for example, Blue Origin or Axiom or any of these people. These are the folks that will be able to have that opportunity. Maybe even SpaceX. Maybe they will have a station on orbit too. The thing here is that SpaceX has this hidden leverage and that leverage is the reusability of those Falcon 9 rockets that are continuously putting up cargo and astronauts into LEO or low earth orbit into space. So they do have a massive leveraging tool here because they are the one, <laughs> you know? There are other companies that are making these launches happen, but they're just few and far between compared to what SpaceX is doing. Sometimes it's two launches, sometimes it's four launches. You just don't know from one coast to the other coast. It is a really big deal, a really big deal. So how does this all play out? I really don't know. I would love to see SpaceX put up their own ISS, their own space station. Why not? They have the ability to do it. Remember, we are still in this geopolitical race with China, right? We are in this race for space supremacy, let's call it. China, with their Tian Gong, I think is the name of its station over there, they're doing these LEO launches all the time also. So they are making or forcing NASA to fast track what is going on with the space stations or the future space stations. They have to really be cognizant of what China is doing. Now, is everything what they're doing, uh, let's say roses or peaches and cream? It's not. They're blowing rockets up all the time also. Well, just like SpaceX is, but SpaceX has a Falcon 9 that is proven. Some of those Falcon 9 rockets have launched like 20 times plus already. That reusability is what makes SpaceX completely different than every other space company out there. Once again, like Blue Origin, like ULA, like just all of them. No one compares to SpaceX because of it. And, you know, we have to look at also the economy, 
right? The economics that are at risk here. Like they were talking about in this article, you're talking about billions and billions of dollars. You're talking about tens of thousands of people that are employed in the space industry or just the ISS alone. There is thousands of people that can potentially lose their jobs. This is definitely a job crisis of what's going on here. And they know it. But you can look at it another way. The ISS has been around for decades. So you're gonna lose some jobs because eventually everything moves forward. So if people have jobs currently with the ISS, they should be able to get jobs with a private company because they have the knowledge that other people don't. And that's one of the things that they were talking about in this article, that procurement, that, that movement, or that gaining of knowledge from the people that have been working on the ISS for decades. And to be able to now shuttle that to the private, you, it's something that almost has to be done because if it's not, we're gonna go backwards instead of forwards right? We're not going to be that superpower, that space supremacy that we currently have. China will take over for sure. So we need to somehow move that knowledge once again into the private sector. How is that done? Maybe it's just simply moving the jobs there. Or that consortium like they're talking about, that, that group that they build, let's say, of knowledge where everyone can now place that knowledge almost open source into a, let's call it a book, where all of the people will have the knowledge in the US of what has been done all this time. But remember, the only problem that I have with that is because the ISS is not just simply US. It is now a international spacecraft, right? Where internationally a lot of work is being done. Now, how much of that work is being shared between the US, between the Russians, between the Chinese? I don't know. But whatever isn't being shared definitely needs to be shared, in my personal opinion, with the private sector that's going to take over where the ISS left off. It's an issue. It is definitely an issue and the private companies are gonna to have to figure it out. Like I said, is it going to be just simply the movement of the knowledge, the brains from that sector, from the NASA ISS moving them into the private sector? Is that how it's going to happen? I don't know. I really don't know. Or is it going to be that big book, you know, where everyone just dumps their knowledge into it and they all can benefit from it? But something has to be done because you can't, once again, lose all that knowledge or we are not going to be able to stay on top. Because if that doesn't happen, like I said before, the Chinese will surpass us, absolutely, undoubtedly. So how does it all play out? What do you think they should do? What is the answer? What do you think is gonna happen with all the people that lose their jobs from the ISS and everything behind the ISS? Remember, whenever you have a, let's say a business, we look at ISS as a business. There is a lot of people down the chain that will lose jobs that are supplying the ISS, that's doing work and research, and the, the entire chain will be gone, all right? It's going to then have to then move once again into the private sector. You know, so what ends up happening? What do you think? What do you think NASA should do about it? Do you think that Elon Musk and SpaceX should come up with their own ISS or their own space station? I personally think that they should. And the reason being is they have the facility to do it, number one. Number two, they have the means to be able to put the mass of cargo in space without a problem and do it in short order. Not even think about it. They can get all of the stuff that they need into orbit probably within a month and build another ISS or a bigger one, right? So they can do it. Should they do it or should they just be the facilitator of the rest of the small private companies that want to do this? What is the answer? I don't know, what say you? Down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, as I said before, and share. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books. If there's something there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you on the ISS. Take care, guys.